Hi everyone, welcome back to World Class Inventors. It's a few weeks before Christmas 2022 and I haven't done a video since early August. And I just wanted to give you an update what I've been up to. First of all, I'd like to thank all of you for watching my videos. I never thought that I would get any views at all. And my biggest seller is how to file an idiot proof patent for $75. And that's up over 2,400 views at this point. And I'm astounded. So that means some of you guys out there are having ideas that are worthy of documenting and filing a provisional patent application to hold your date in line, a date certain or a priority date, you have one year to file a patent. And that's good, that's commendable. I'm excited, I'm excited for you of course. That's only the beginning. Once you progress a little bit, you're going to end up having to file a non-provisional or you're going to lose your place in line. We've already been through that and we've beat a dead horse over it. A year's time goes very, very fast for the inventor and the product developer. Don't be lax about filing your provisional and then just waiting and thinking you're going to file a non-provisional at the last minute. It doesn't work that way. There is much to do. So that's why I uploaded my book or a little promo. It's not even a minute and a half about the World Class Inventors Handbook. I really, really encourage you to read it because there's nothing like it out there, period. Certainly not by anybody that started off as a backyard inventor and ended up having a product that sold a couple hundred million dollars worth of inventory in Walmart like I did, and I changed the category, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, that video, video number 31, that's the one worth watching because you should check out my book and you can get it in an e-version and in a print. And if I was you, I would get it in a print because the pages can be highlighted, they can be marked, they can be doggied, and you're gonna use it as a teaching tool, as a reference book on what to do and what to know. And it basically is my journey in a sense of becoming uh, an inventor who got a product out into the marketplace. And I reverse engineered that process after I went through four years of pretrial litigation with Honeywell International, which was the 18th largest corporation in the world at that time when they violated my misappropriation of trade secrets, my patents, the licenses, the contract, the whole ball of wax. So I had to sit down and pound out a catharsis on what the hell actually happened to me on the way to the fair. Anyway, that is very important for you to read. It's a cheap date. The print book is 20 bucks. The ebook is 10. And don't think you're gonna get rich off of writing books. Only famous people do, only social media stars, athletes, politicians. The average person who writes a book writes it because they basically have something to say, something to share. And I guess that's been my case because I sat on both of my books for almost two decades. There's no money in books. I don't even make a dollar a copy by time the printer gets done or the distributor or the end retailer. So don't think I'm hawking my books because I'm gonna become a millionaire from selling my books. I wish I could. I put in well over a thousand hours in each book. I taught myself to be a writer, a copy editor, um, 
a producer, whatever, a book formatter. But it was something I had to do. And it's just recently that I decided to put my stuff out on YouTube as of last March when I was going through a midlife crisis and turning 64. I say that tongue in cheek, I'm laughing at it. So where have I been? I've been watching the sunrises a lot. I've been fishing for striped bass. I'm wearing my striped bass fishing shirt. I just got back. I've been on the beach since five o'clock this morning and it's only nine o'clock right now. And I watched the sun come up. I caught a half a dozen stripers. I lost that. I lost that many as well. I got to talk to God a bit. And I asked him if I could please be granted my notice of allowance. Now, what does that mean to you? You see, I filed a patent for a tangle free flag. Actually, it's a tangle proof flag. And I spent the 800 bucks and I did my patent search and by the way, that's a waste of money and I'll explain that to you in a second or maybe in another video. And after 22 months, it landed in the hands of a patent examiner. It took me 22 months. What happens is on August 16th, I received the paperwork and I have what is called a non-final rejection. It's an office action. You have to respond to it. You have three months in which to respond of course, you can pay a fee to have that time extended. The patent office will always work with you for a fee. They always have their handout for your money. So just be advised of that. That's just how this game works. So I get a non-final rejection. I'm absolutely floored. I'm blown away. I look at the prior art that's cited against me and it doesn't, it doesn't add up, it doesn't make sense. Everything that I thought about, everything that I went through on two prior patents, it's, it's all unraveling. So I went into hiding. I didn't curl up in a ball in the fetal position, and I didn't call somebody else up to hold my hand and help me. I sat down at my word processor, my, my laptop, and I did something absolutely insane. As you know, I've written two books. I told you that ad nauseum. I pounded out a 200 plus page rebuttal. Now, that's where I've been. And that's certainly not what you hand in to the patent office, a 200 page rebuttal. You gotta keep it short and sweet and simple, stupid. Your rebuttal should only be at best, a one to two to three page elevator pitch. And then you have to address the claims that got rejected and you have to really have a come to Jesus moment and redo them. There is much, much I have to share with you. And that's where I've been. So I resubmitted my, uh, or I, or I submitted my response to that office action with the short elevator pitch, two and a half pages. And I redid my claims. And that 200 pages I wrote was a catharsis, but I ended up knowing, that's a bird outside. I ended up knowing my patent my specification, my claims, and the prior art cited against me in a fashion in which I never could. Now, this is not anything that I would suggest you do because what I had done was I had immersed myself, basically locked myself to my computer for 21 days, and I worked 12 to 
14 to 16 hours a day and I wrote this thing and maybe one day I'll upload it as a PDF and I'll let you look at it but that's where I've been so since really August 16th it's been sunrises stripers and an office action so I just wanted to let you know where I've been. I have more videos to do. I wasn't in the mood. I wasn't in the fighting condition to put them together because they do take a little bit of time and energy. And I thought I'd share this with you. So have a great Christmas. I have a couple more videos that I should put out before Christmas. I'm gonna do a promo on The Greed of a Dime, my, my first book I ever wrote on the journey of what it was like to pick up a telephone and sell a Fortune 38 company, my disruptive idea over the phone. I'm gonna put that little one together for you as a promo. That's an important book too, because it really highlights in Technicolor what the journey was like for a backyard inventor and the run up to what it looks like to sue one of the biggest companies on the planet by yourself. Anyway, I talked enough I'll see you in the next video. God bless you. And if I don't get a chance, have a great Christmas. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.